Hello everyone, welcome back. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Debbie and I make art videos. I have a project for you guys today and it's kind of a seasonal thing, but you can start it now in the season that we're in and then revisit it with every season that arrives. I think it's kind of neat. I hope you like it. So let's get started. The idea for this art project was sparked by a Draw This In Your Style that I saw from Mary DeMary on Instagram that reminded me of Alphonse Mucha's seasonal paintings. And I thought this would be a great thing to do over the winter. In this series, every season is represented by a woman embodying the characteristics of that particular season. And this is what is known as an allegorical piece of artwork. Allegory is a very commonly used artistic device in classical artwork. And although it's often used to depict nature, it could also be used to depict complex ideas like wisdom or liberty. I'm sure you've seen a few of these around and not noticed. I took inspiration from one of my favorite Art Nouveau artisans named René Lalique. He has these beautiful um, jewelry pieces and I just adore them and I love the frames and I've looked at them so much that like it's really intuitive for me but I wanted to add some kind of like coldness in there so I tried to mold in ideas of bone. I think bone is like one of those things that kind of like is a connotation of death and winter is kind of a representation of death or, or the sleep cycle. I don't know, you know, it's a meditation. But that's what this project is about. It's about deciding what winter means to you because winter doesn't mean the same thing to everybody and every winter isn't the same. Winters here are very harsh. We drop down to negative 40 Celsius. The winds blow strong. It can be challenging at times. And this year has been particularly brutal because it's been dark. I can handle a cold day, but a dark day, those weigh on me. What I like about this idea is that everybody's winter is different and everyone's personal experience of winter is different. So you're gonna get so many different varieties of what that means to everyone and I would love to see you guys try this out and uh, share your different winter experiences in this kind of more poetic form. I drew the initial drawing in Procreate as you saw previously and I am not a digital painter. It's so challenging for me and I haven't figured it out yet. I really want to. But regardless, I gave it a go for a day and I was just like at my wit's end. And then I'm like, whatever, I'm gonna print this out. And so I printed it out on a pastel type paper. And I actually really liked the way the print came out. And so I wasn't really even sure what I was gonna do. I'm like, I'm just gonna try painting this. And I started with gouache and I really like the way that the gouache handled on the print and I discovered that you can completely hide the printed drawing the gouache covers it so that's an option as far as like not needing a light table you can just print it out but the reality is in the process of this this whole painting and I don't know artwork did did get away from me because I really wasn't sure where I was going I was just kind of doing an experiment I have the the drawing still and I can always print out another one or maybe finally figure out how to paint it in Procreate but this ended up being more of a meditation for me and maybe it can be for you as well a way to like reflect on the season that you're experiencing and 
kind of dwell in the feelings that that brings up. And to be honest, it was a very kind of soothing meditative experience. I feel like I spent so much time doing so little, actually with my paints and pencil crayons eventually, but I was just there thinking about it. And I really think this is kind of a neat way to stay focused on a project as well. If you have a hard time staying focused, the idea of bringing symbolic language into your piece or trying to convey what your winter looks like, these are all difficult things. And sometimes when things are hard, you slow down. And that slowing down helps you stay focused. At least that's what I found. Although I did some tests with color and I had a little, like the extra piece of paper that I had cut off from my image, I was using as a little swatch card and I do recommend that, especially with toned paper because it's gonna look different. I didn't really decide on a color palette, which is what I should have done, but I kind of just went in. And the only thing that I really wanted to do is kind of like, it's been so dark here. And the other day I went out and I filmed a few things, a few moments in winter, trying to look for the the beauty that I can find in the darkness of these days. And um, what struck me were these little orange leaves that stuck out, you know, the, the last few leaves that never dropped off the trees. And they're like the only color out there on the gray days. And I, I somehow wanted to like put that into the picture. So I thought her hair should be like the leaves Another aspect that I was trying to include was the way that you lose the tops of the trees when it's really snowy and overcast. They kind of disappear into the haze and it's it's a quite pretty um, moment that you get some days and I wanted to try to get that idea and what I found challenging about that was getting the right kind of gray. You know, in my head, I thought it was cool, but when I took photos, I realized it was kind of like a warm gray. And so that was interesting and informative to me. I really liked the way her skin looked when I just did this like light wash of gouache over it. So it was kind of hazy and transparent and had like a little bit of color, but not too much. And I sort of, sort of should have stayed there because then it let the blue come through and then it was cold but skin at the same time. I went really heavy with the pencil crayons later on and I lost a lot of the underdrawing and a lot of the subtlety but I'm very inexperienced with pencil crayons <laughs> so it's bound to happen. I, I don't uh, feel bad about it at all. <laughs> it was more about the process of doing this for me. It was a learning experience. Her crown was meant to look like antlers in a way, or also twigs, dry twigs, something in between there, but I co colored it like bone, like, because I thought that looked cool. <laughs> Although my pencil crayon layer got way too heavy and I overworked the piece, I did learn a few more things about working with pencil crayon that I didn't know before. So it was all worth it. And I'm gonna say that it's a very slow process. Working with pencil crayon is a little bit frustrating if you're used to working with paints because paints move way faster, in my opinion. Anyways, perhaps that's because I'm inexperienced, but I did find it very slow to build color and also if you wanted to blend colors together, you have to be very kind of strategic of placement and also blending. The light colors are so handy. The light colors are usually what I was using to blend areas together. And there was more back and forth between light and dark colors than I expected to be able to do. So that was interesting. <music>
Thank you for joining me in this video, everyone. And I hope that this gave you some ideas on different techniques that you can use in order to create art. And sometimes if you just have an idea and you're able to meditate on it, you can build on it and it creates an environment for uh, really deep, deeper concentration. So I think that if you have trouble focusing, this is a really good a, like solution to uh, the distraction because there's so many elements that go into building a piece like this. So the color is a reflection. So even just getting engaged with the color aspect can be uh, something that keeps you going and keeps you engaged with the work that you're working on. So I hope that um, you got some ideas and I hope that you'll try this out and uh, let me know if you do and I'll see you at the next one. Bye everyone. Thank you.